Eleven months had passed since I had left these very mountains. With a truckload of frustration, gut twisted in guilt, and a quiver of razor-tipped arrows. Minus one. Bobby rolled footage over my shoulder once again, but we didn't find the jolly herds of elk we'd come to expect from this range of mountains, canyons, and critters. Like driving past your old high school ten years later, it just didn't look the same. It looked, strangely, smaller. And after a few days kicking around the familiar trails and timber lines, it became clear to me it was time to move on. Time once again to wander.
I'd spotted had indeed been hunkered down in the bedding area I'd honed in on. And despite a cautious approach, sprinkled with elk calls and sounds of all flavors, he had kept his lips sealed, and me unaware of his location. Certainly surprising, given how ideally my approach had played out. But knowing that something was coming, the bull had ample opportunity to watch me approach, then bump out and over the canyon rim. I followed his tracks, inquisitive of where he would lead me. A strange combination of smoldering wildfire smoke and thunderstorms alternated occupations of the sky around. Between white curtains blowing in the wind, I was spotting elk, and all bulls. Not bad, I thought to myself. Now, just to get them talking. Over the hills and far away, Nirvana, as I called it, was proving to be a trove of diversity and discovery. Despite a lot of rain, the vibe of the place felt welcoming. Huge mushrooms bulged from the rain-soaked earth like nothing I'd ever seen before. The place simply felt magical. With each following week's hall pass, I continued my exploration of this beautiful country and found bulls everywhere I went. By mid-September, I'd counted something like 14 different mature bulls, and not one cow. Nor had I heard even a single bugle. It made no sense to me that so many bulls would be holding together the way they were so late in September. I'd already witnessed classic rutting elk behavior a few ranges over in my previous zone. So why was this area so different? the cows? Why were these bulls completely silent, even at night? Without question, cow elk of the region were in estrus during this time. So why didn't this population of mature bulls respond to estrus calls, even to come in silent if nothing else? In settings which I could see bulls, they'd barely even lift their head to look. Over the course of three weeks and subsequent trips, these questions only blazed brighter and proved bizarrely confounding. It was perplexing, although oddly entertaining. And the pure solitude I enjoyed kept my spirits from diving into the gutter. It was certainly a kind of hunting that I could tolerate, 
Granted, I was expecting the lid to blow off any day and have these big bowls rumbling over the top of me.